Hey, what's up? Welcome to Chris Art. My name is Chris Strini, and I'm pretty excited for this video because we're taking things a little bit easier this time. I know that we kind of got a, a, a little complicated last week. You know, we released a tutorial for the full VFX breakdown of the latest music video project that we released. So there was definitely a lot of information there, but this time, I'm gonna simplify things even more and I wanna actually reveal with you a secret that a lot of people, a lot of creators use that oftentimes they don't wanna to admit to. So we're talking about templates. We're talking about templates and we're gonna see how templates can not only speed up your workflow, but how when you combine them and use them properly, you can actually get some pretty high-end looking results that people would never guess came from a template. So that and more is what you'll see in this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this change of pace and uh, Let's get into it. So whenever you see over the top graphics and motion graphics, uh, maybe even from some of your favorite creators, a lot of times they look over the top and really complicated. It's like, okay, if I start there and I start animating this and this, it's like, it's gonna take a while to get all the way to, you know, a full intro, a full promo that feels dynamic, that feels smooth. And, uh, you know, instead of spending the time to kind of tweak those parameters and those things from scratch every time, you can kind of have access to a marketplace that maybe has some of those elements already figured out for you. So, okay, let's take a look at a, uh, a logo, a simple logo intro, and let's, uh, let's see how we can modify and elevate it. So here is the final logo animation. The original template, although very similar, it didn't quite look and feel like this. So here's the original template. So yeah, all the main elements are pretty much there. It was just a matter of kind of combining the right parts. You can see like this ending title, the animation of it looked really cool. So that fit right into the actual logo animation. And then there is the triangle stuff at the beginning, which was really great. So when you combine things and you start to add some of the tricks that we're about to see, it, it's actually pretty easy to get something that feels very different from the starting point and just make it feel a little bit bigger. And now I wanna take this a step further and I wanna combine this logo animation, like I mentioned in the beginning with maybe a slideshow that has some cool parallax effects, has some nice splits or graphics or whatever. And uh, this is what that looks like. So I'm showing you this before we actually get into the software because this is a very important mindset to have as a starting point. I wanna point out how you know both the logo itself, although from a different template, and the slideshow still tie in uh, you know, thematically, visually, in terms of style, and simple ways that you can let a theme carry over in a consistent way, and so that it doesn't look like random pieces put together, is communicating story, communicating emotion, communicating a certain vibe, uh, and, and keeping that consistent. So, for example, in the perspectives intro logo, you can see that there's all these like all these different mirrored and different sides of the same image. And you also see that pattern kind of happening in the title because it shows different pieces, different fragments that although different, they form into one idea in unison. And that is the theme of the future podcast, by the way, that's that's what this is about. This is a podcast that I wanted to launch some time ago, got really busy, life got kind of in the way. so. Hopefully I can release that soon. And by the way, the people featured in the intro logo, this was just for like a test pilot animation thing. It's nothing official. So hopefully they don't care that they're featured in this, but regardless, they're super talented people, whether I get to interview them or not. So I'm gonna leave their Instagrams uh, in the description because they just make cool stuff and I think you can learn a lot from them. So shout out to my friends, Hunter, Bree, and Kevin. They're the people that are featured in that video. So just wanted to put that side note, hopefully, the podcast will be coming out. It'll be sharing different perspectives. And if you are interested in that, or if you care for me to start a podcast, let me know in the comment section below because I've postponed it a lot. I'm a little scared, but just, just let me know. But that's not what this video is about. Let's get back on the topic. And again, these sort of different mirrored sides 
uh, the way that this slideshow is presented and the way that it also ties in to the end logo, now you start to see how it really makes sense with the theme and the goal of, in this case, the podcast. And one more example of this that I'll show you is the intro that I did and the trailer for the lighting workshop that we did with Aperture. Uh, sometimes, even if you don't have a light and you just have sunlight, this is a great way of, uh, of shaping things. If you're dealing with one light, that's one of the challenges to make sure that you're directing it where it needs to be. Balance the curriculum in public, the bulb is going to appear uh, white. If my key is at one point, how much fill do I have? Going into it, I knew that I wanted sort of these light beams to kind of, you know, shed light on a topic or on an instructor saying something interesting as a way of uh, introducing them. And I found the perfect template for this. This is what it looked like originally. So didn't have to modify a whole lot for this one because it already really worked into what I was trying to do. So it was just a matter of changing the text, you know, adding the right B-roll and I was good to go. A big side note that I'm kind of skipping out on in this video is all the sound design, the music choice, you know, the type of editing that you do within the B-roll clips. All this stuff also really elevates the way you present things, you know, even within a template. But that is all stuff I've covered tons and ton of times. So if you're interested in any of that, I'm going to leave some links in the info card about sound design, about anything that could help with just spicing things up editing wise and sound wise. But let's get technical because I think you get the point. It needs to make sense thematically. You need to contextualize with the story or the brand that you're trying to represent and animation, choice of template, backgrounds, colors. They should all reflect that. With that out of the way, let's actually jump into After Effects and let's see how we can start to modify and combine things. So you've picked your template, you've downloaded it, you've unzipped it. Now you can open it in After Effects. And by the way, when you open a project file that was not created by you, chances are it was made in a different version of After Effects, maybe on a PC if you're using a Mac or vice versa. So when you first open it up, it'll just give you a message that says it needs to convert to template. That'll probably happen, but no worries, just click OK and you don't have to do anything. And then with the project file open, you are ready to go. Now I'm going to really speed through this because I know it's super basic stuff. I don't want to lose you guys, but I want to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Most templates are set up with their compositions and their scenes, you know, their main stuff that you want to open and modify. They usually place that on the left hand side under the project panel. That is almost the menu of the template in a way. And you can sort of start breaking things down from there. You can access, you know, different titles, maybe different compositions that were made for different animations. And as a side note that I'll say here, once you find what you're looking for within the template, my recommendation is find what you need and delete everything else. Because honestly, when you're dealing with other people's workflows, uh, other people's way of labeling and organizing things, and especially in a template, which might have a lot of options for similar things. Once you find the things that you want, delete the rest because it'll declutter your working space and it'll make things uh, a lot less confusing. So that's my pro tip for using templates and starting off and it'll save you a lot of headaches later on. So now that we're set up with the basics, it's time to have fun. We can modify things, we can combine things. And just like you would import this project file into your own project, you can import other project files from other templates into whatever project you have open. And that's how you can start to combine elements from different templates. For example, you can grab a title from one place and you know a slideshow from another and you can put them in the same project file in After Effects. All you have to do, go to your project panel, right click, hit import, or you can go on the file and import and just select the project file that you want to import. And that's it. So if you want to combine multiple elements from different projects, that's how you do it. But now I want to take things a little bit further and I want to show you how you can apply some very simple effects, just some very simple steps that I take in sort of enhancing the starting point that I have with my templates. So I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to apply this for a lot of the templates that you modify, but keep in mind that these are little tricks and things that I do, but you know, it's for my style. So the first thing that I like to do is get familiar with the template, of course, explore it, dive deep into every layer, pre-comp and all that, and ju just figure out how it works and what things you can change in it. Once you're familiar with that, depending on the type of animation, what I like to do is kind of pre-compose the whole thing or maybe just go to the main composition and then just duplicate that. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe even a couple of times, get a little crazy and then make it a 3D layer and now you can sort of separate those layers out in 3D space. And this is great because what you can do now is not only add 
multi-layer complexity. So these different elements appear to have a new form of parallax and, and it just looks more complicated because those animated elements are now duplicated. So they, they add more detail, I guess. And then to kind of highlight movement in that, you can create a camera, a 3D camera with an After Effects. And what I like to do here is also create a 3D null so that I can control that camera. And all I have to do to do that is to just parent the camera to that null object. Now I can control the position parameters, the rotation of the null, and it'll affect the camera, which it's always a good thing to do because I always just get confused with the camera controls themselves. I just like to have a null that makes it a little bit more clear. So now you can animate the null and the camera in turn, and then you can really get some nice push-ins or push-outs or whatever you wanna do. Then what I like to do is add some blur effects to those layers. This is just a cheap and easy way to do uh, fake depth of field, essentially. You can control this within the camera settings, but again, if you can do it quick and easy and just drag a camera lens blur, if it works, it works, so I do that. And then I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer with another set of camera lens blur. And this is more to give me sort of a vignette of blur, uh, you know, just around the edges. And then from here, I mean, of course, this is all preference, but I like to add some color correction, some color grading to just add a little bit more punch to the template, add a little bit more contrast maybe. And then another final thing that you can do, again, you can get crazy, go into third-party plugins like uh, Magic Bullet Looks, you can add some chromatic aberration in there. You can add some diffusion maybe. And also I like to re-noise these, uh, these templates with a little bit of film grain. This is, this is a cool tip because when you get VFX, when you get templates, anything that was made from within the computer, it is missing all the imperfections, all the defects that you get from filming the real world with a camera. So, you know, adding a little bit of noise and makes things a little bit more imperfect. Same goes with the chromatic aberration and a little bit of the diffusion and the highlights. It gives it more of a real feeling. I don't know, but I like to do that. And it also helps to kind of glue things together. Speaking of that, another extra step, but why did that come out like that? Oof. I can't wait for a vacation. You know, this whole COVID thing, I'm just been in here making these videos and I hope, I hope you enjoy them. I hope, I hope they're worth it. I mean, I'm stuck, I can't do anything else. So we're talking about templates, but I, I do find a ton of value in this stuff. And a lot of, not a lot of people talk about it because of pride. They want to show like, oh, I did this all by myself. No, you didn't. But, um, hey, we're back in the video. So the nice thing is that once you're comfortable with all this stuff, you know, templates, they're, they're not closed boxes anymore. You know, you don't look at them that way anymore. You look at this like scary thing is like, oh, if I change this thing, maybe I broke the whole thing. They almost become like these building blocks. So just play with them. You know, don't be intimidated by maybe a ton of layers. Again, my initial tip of deleting what you don't need will make this process smoother and smoother over time. But just get familiar, get familiar with After Effects. And I promise all this will become more and more fun and uh, it'll save you a ton of time. I actually wanna show you an example of how I used, you know, just simple animations that I made from scratch, simple cuts to an edit. And then I just added these sort of seamless transitions that I'm sure by now you've seen all over YouTube, but I wanna play you that intro, so. So there you go, not much to say there. Of course, these transition effects, they all, they all change depending on what they are. So I, I'm, I'm trying not to get too technical and too specific here because I don't wanna tell you what template you should buy, what transitions you should buy, but I'm just showing you ways that you can use them and uh, how they can really spice things up and you know just add an extra little punch to things because these transitions, although they weren't super necessary in the sequence, they definitely helped with gluing all these different moments together. Plus, they're pretty fun. But now, moving on from templates, moving on from transitions, there's actually graphics, just like titles and other things that can play into you know, your regular videos. Like, uh, for example, going back to the lighting workshop that we did, we had a lot of these like line call-out graphics that we use to sort of describe certain products, certain models, and we always get questions, oh, what, what light was that? What, what modifier did you use right there? You know, what, what was that? So having that visually on screen, it, it's, it's just really useful because a lot of times all this information, all these details, they kind of get lost uh, in translation or in communication because you're kind of 
speaking on the next thing, especially in a setting like a lighting workshop. And so it was nice to have this additional information on screen. And I mean, obviously you can see the use going into, you know, product shots, all this other stuff. And having a strong marketplace with so many contributors and categories opens up so many possibilities. Things like this are really exciting, I think. The, the bigger picture here, if I can ramble about something that has nothing to do with templates, but everything to do with templates, is that it is opening up accessibility to creators. And I love that because growing up, I there was none of this. There was none of this. So it's a blessing. And I'm just super excited of the, the contribution that these templates offers, the, the collaboration really, so that you're not alone having to start everything from scratch every time. Uh, I think it's a great thing. And I think that it is making things a lot more accessible for indie filmmakers because you don't need a team of, you know, motion graphics artists, editors and all of that to get weekly episodes out on YouTube or do all this stuff. Now you can be really in control of this. And I think that's a, that's great. A lot of tangents in this video. I, I, I hope you like this mix of not so technical, but also kind of like just chatting it up. And by the way, I actually even use templates for my product shots of the packs, the digital packs that we've been releasing. So from the very first one, vintage light effects to the newest digital pack particles, the boxes animation that was all done with a 3D box creator template. And it's it's actually really great because all I have to worry about is just designing the cover and then I could just bring it into the right composition and everything updates in the main viewport and the main comp. So again, another really time-saving uh, template that I found that I use for even my own products, ironically. And so there you have it. I spilled the beans and hopefully you can make a good burrito out of them. It's been a long week, guys. It's been a long week. I'm honestly like, I'm tired. I'm tired. It's so hard to make these videos and be like, hey, templates. No, I, I, I really enjoy these. I, I enjoy sharing this information, especially if it can help others. It's just, you know, I guess just some weeks are heavier than others. Uh, I'm just honestly exhausted from having launched that whole project with the music video and all the content that went along with that. There was so much work. So beyond this video, if you're looking for something else to watch, please check out the main episode that we launched with the music video, as well as the full breakdown on how it was shot and all of that. And also, if you want to check out the products that I mentioned earlier, uh, they were used in that music video a lot. I um, mean, all the light hits, all the lens flares, and all the particles, the snow particles coming in, dust, all of that in the rooms, it was all from the packs. So I know I made them, I know I have bias in them, but hey, I love them, I use them all the time, and I think that you will find a lot of good use in it too. And it's a great way to support the channel and uh, you know allow me to keep making these videos. If you're not into all of that, all I ask is just to leave a like and just hit subscribe. You know, I, I think that's a fair exchange. If you liked the video, if you didn't like it, let me know. I mean, if this video sucked, you don't have to like it. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Chris Dream for Chris Gar, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, um, what's up? This is Chris from Chris Gar Productions. Something real quick I want to say. You just finished seeing um, my video. I just finished with the editing right now. And I want to say that, unless you didn't notice, it was absolutely fake. No one got hurt. Um, don't get me wrong, I, uh, I know you probably might think that something's wrong with me from this video. It is just um, a cool technique that came in mind and I wanted to share with you guys so that you can apply it with your projects. You know, you're, feel, feel free to get inspiration from this video and use it in your own projects. But that's it. No one got hurt. This is absolutely fake. Thanks for watching and check out Chris Gore Productions.